Welcome. Hello, everyone. This is Steve Suffletto from Area Community College near Buffalo, New York. Um, this is a second video. We had a previous video on a PowerPoint presentation talking about flexography and its importance in flexible packaging. What I want to do now is just show you some examples uh, of flexography. So I have a homework assignment where I have my students bring me in samples of packaging and they have to identify uh, the printing process that created it. So let's just take a look at some of these. All these samples we'll be looking at are by Flexography or Flexo. So if you put this under a magnifying glass you'll see the characteristic Of a, a halo ring outline border. If you look at the halftone dots, you'll see that the halftone dots have a hollow center. Notice that some of this packaging uh, is on clear film, other are on opaque film, and, sti and even still more are on metallized or aluminum foil film, either laminated or vaporized. Here's some more examples of flexography. Now this one's interesting because it doesn't lay flat because it was actually shrink wrapped, uh, shrink molded. Shrink sleeve is the actual best term is this is for shrink sleeve, so it's three dimensional. So we're seeing a lot of um, beverage here, Sprite. Mountain Dew. Pepsi. Coca-Cola. Coke. Another Mountain Dew. Now on these clear films, you have two choices. You can print on the top of the film, which is called surface print where the image is right reading, or you can print on the back of the film, which is called reverse print, where the image is wrong reading. And the advantage of doing a wrong reading reverse print is that it protects the ink uh, so it's more durable. Again, these are all samples, examples of flexography. Here's a little bag pouch with a zipper lock. Another bag or pouch with a zipper lock, all uh, by flexography. Now we're starting to look at bags. A lot of bags here. Bread bags, muffin bags, bagel bags. The other thing we see a very common trend in flexography or flexible packaging is they print the color bars and they either hide them in the gussets at the bottom or at the seams or at the sides. This is an interesting example where um, traditionally, not so much true anymore, but traditionally uh, Flexel couldn't print a minimum highlight dot, so they had to carry a fuller, larger dot, which made all the whites look very dark, flat, and low in contrast. Okay, here's an interesting example. I think this is the only one I have uh, for flexography on a bag. All right. That's Flexel on a bag, paper bag. Color is different here. Okay. So a lot of so there's, when you think about flexography, uh, think about the plate, which is a flexible rubber or polymer plate. 
and think about the substrates that we print on. We have a lot of flexibility and the materials are flexible. This one's interesting because it actually has a, a embossed feel to it. Metalized for vapor protection and moisture protection so the potato chips stay fresh for a long time. Again, color bars, color bars. You just look at them, color bars, color bars, color bars, color bars. There was a time where we didn't want to show the end user, the print buyer, the customer color bars, but now I think the feeling is if you see a color bar, the customer doesn't know exactly what it is, but they know it has something to do with quality. So they know we're monitoring or evaluating quality. And these are all flexography. So this is on uh, plastic films. Look at all the size of these color bars here. Uh, look at the color variation. We got a dark, saturated, vibrant red. Here the magenta's washed out and they're starting to look very washed out, weak light. Um, so it might be interesting to measure those densities. Let's do that real quick. So magenta solid density here, 112. That's on the light washed out one. Let's look at the darker one. 135. So that's partially explaining why that's so much redder. We'd have to actually check the yellow too to make sure it wasn't just just that. Okay, now, these are all examples of flexography, and we should know how to characterize or identify flexography based on the halo ring outline border, and if you look at the halftone dots, the halftone dots will be hollow in the center. But I also wanted to show you that flexible packaging doesn't have to be just flexography or flexo, it could also be gravure or lithography. So these are all printed by gravure, sometimes called rotogravure. Joy on that pearlescent substrate. This one's interesting, Gravure, because it has um, hot foil leaf stamping. Now, I don't know if that's hot foil or if that's cold foil. And it also has a die cut with a window here. So that's interesting. Again, Gravure. Gravure and Gravure. So the flexible packaging can be of many different sizes, shapes, and forms, different types of products. All of these labels are printed by offset lithography. Some are on paper, some are on film. Paper, 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 film, paper, paper. Typically a C1S coated one side, paper. Lithography, paper, C1S. This is a film. Got that pearlescent look to it. And here's another film. Again, all by offset lithography probably in a web press. The paper ones could be a sheet fed press, but the plastic film ones are typically a web press. And then finally, uh, we were talking about flexography for flexible packaging, but flexography can also be used for folding cartons. So these are examples of flexography for folding cartons. Flexography for folding cartons. Tim Hortons, Tim Bits. Again, look at all the uh, color bars 
hidden in the tuck flaps, the dust flaps. Uh, so sometimes the customer never sees these, but when they're in a blank flat form, uh, we can still do evaluation on them. Okay, Crest toothpaste. This is on SBS solid bleach sulfite. SBS, SBS solid bleach sulfite. Um, nice UV coating on here. Okay, again, these are flexography for folding carton. So when you're unfolding carton, you're typically um, going to be on a paper board. And then we have tissue. Again, glued in window. Color bars and the dust flaps or tuck flaps. Craft back paper. Paper board. Target for dot distortion or pressure settings. More color bars. Okay, so in summary, we wanted to talk about examples and samples done by flexography for flexible packaging which would be things like wrappers and labels and bags and pouches um, and then we also took that a look at the flexible packaging done by gravure and flexible packaging done by lithography and then finally we looked at flexible packaging done by unfolding cartons okay bye now